Hello and welcome to this industry forum overview of the new aerospace standard AS9145. The standard forms a part of a number of interlinked quality standards which supports the Aerospace Engineering Supplier Quality Committee, the AESQ, their strategy to create a series of related quality standards for use within the aerospace engine supply chain. It is expected that the standard will also be adopted by aerospace sector supply chains outside of aero engine supply. AS9145, Advanced Product Quality Planning Production Part Approval Process. The purpose of this standard is to establish a uniform approach to product realization across the aviation, space and defense industry, ensuring that quality products are delivered on time while satisfying cost performance uh, targets. The standard applies to new product development, can be also applied to products currently in production where changes are planned. It can be applied to the final product or select selected levels of parts, for example, parts within an assembly as defined by the organization or customer. When this standard is flowed down as a general contractual requirement, for example, not for a specific program or project, the scope of applicability is established between the organization and the customer. In the battle to control the introduction of new parts or processes, or to manage changes to existing parts or processes, it has become clear that a structured approach gives the best results. Over the years, organizations have created their own approach, which often has been different to the approach used by other organizations. This left supply organizations having to master a variety of approaches to meet their individual customers' needs. The aerospace sector has looked at the automotive industry and have taken the model used in some sections of the automotive industry for both planning for product introduction, introduction and also to confirm both the product and process are suitable for serial production. These approaches have been named Advanced Product Quality Planning, APQP, and the Production Part Approval Process, PAP. AS9145 defines two things. The first thing it defines is a process to be followed. This is called Advanced Product Quality Planning. So in simple terms, we can consider APQP to define the process and PPAP to be the deliverables from the process. Evidence suggests that a greater level of confidence can be given to PPAP submissions, which are the results of following the APQP process. Effectively, if you follow the APQP process, all of the elements of a PPAP file will be created as a matter of order. When we consider AS9145, it defines five levels of activities and it gives us a timeline for those five levels. The first level is planning. Planning is followed by product design and development. This is then followed by process design and development. We then validate both the product and the process. And then finally, we review performance for ongoing production, use and post delivery service. And so this graphic is contained within AS9145. And it's really showing the phases and also when the key PPAP events are being conducted. AS9145 details 11 deliverables from the APQP process, and these 11 deliverables are used as uh, elements within a PPAP file. 
So as we can see, we start the process and as we're moving through the APQP process, we're creating elements for PPAP and these are listed as elements 1 to 11 on the graphic. Some of the expected benefits from a properly um, implemented APQP process is that it aligns the organization's activities with the goal of achieving customer satisfaction. It allows us to communicate product quality requirements to all interested parties. It directs an organization's resources to satisfying the customer. It can promote the early identification of required changes and by promoting changes early, we avoid late changes, which are costly, and it will provide a product quality on time at the lowest cost, meeting the customer's required rate. When we consider the five phases of APQP, as we've already covered, we have phase one, which is planning. We then have phase two, which is doing, which is design the product, design the process. We have act, which is validation, check the product, how it's been defined in the process, how it's operating. And then finally, we can act during ongoing production, use by the customer and post delivery service. So the five phases of APQP link very nicely back to plan, do, check, act. When we consider the planning activities then, the goal of this phase is to capture customer inputs, benchmark data, lessons learned, regulatory requirements, technical specifications, company know-how and strategy into a product concept and realization plan. This includes identification of the high level technical quality and cost targets. And if we focus on the center blue uh, section of this graphic, we can see some of the deliverables from planning. There are things like project targets, for things like safety, quality, manufacturability, service life. We have a preliminary listing of critical items and key characteristics, a preliminary bill of material, and a preliminary process flow diagram. We get involved in preliminary sourcing uh, plans and project planning. So step one really is setting the ground uh, rules and the uh, requirements to be achieved from the technical development of the product or the process. When we move to product design and development, the goal of this phase is to translate the technical quality and cost requirements into a controlled, verified and validated product design. Design validation is, is achieved using prototype, development or production parts in test environments that can represent the customer's installation and subject to the product to extreme condition required by the contract or regulation. We can start seeing items from phase two being used in the PPAP file. For example, the design of risk analysis quite often defined as a DFMEA. We have design records and bill of material. These are PPAP deliverables. When we move to process design and development, then again, we can start to see PPAP elements. Now we have the process flow diagram. We have the process FMEA. We have plans for measurement system analysis. Uh, we have material handling, packaging, labeling, and park, uh, park marking approvals. And we have something known as the production readiness review. But again, the items marked with an asterisk become deliverables into the PPAP file. Product and process validation. Again, we can start to see PPAP deliverables. We can see MSA now being created. 
the initial process capability studies, the control plan, first article inspection, and at this point, the PPAP file and approval form should be fully populated and ready for tidying up and submission to the customer. So if we think about the purpose of PPAP or the production part approval process, it is used to determine if all the customer engineering design record and specification requirements are properly understood by the organization that the manufacturing process has the potential to produce product consistently at the required production rate, that we can meet quality and rate requirements during an actual production run, and that the PPAP file can also be used as the prime source of evidence used during audit to demonstrate that an APQP approach was followed. One of the key items about AS9145 is that it allows flexibility for organizations to tailor the requirements to meet their own uh, specifications. So the aerospace industry has aligned on 11 requirements, and these are seen in the left-hand column under AS9145 requirement. What we can see then within Rolls-Royce's supplier management system requirements uh, document saver, that they have taken the 11 elements identified in AS9145, but also have added an additional 10 elements. So for Rolls-Royce, a PPAP file would contain 21 PPAP elements. And then we can see United Technologies also taking the 11 PPAP elements from AS9145 and adding some additional um, elements. So for UTC, in this instance, we'd actually need 19 elements for a PPAP file. So AS9145 can be customized to meet customer specific requirements. APQP does not conclude at PPAP. So actually, after the part is uh, approved, APQP carries on then, and now it starts looking at ongoing performance. So this is the business as normal phase. So it starts looking at quality performance, such as capability, parts per million, reject rates. It looks at key performance indicators, um, evidence that project targets have been met. It looks at ongoing on-time delivery, capacity and improvement, improve uh, activities. So this continual improvement activity proceeds way past part approval. So in summary, advanced product quality planning is a phase process for the introduction of new parts and processes or changes to existing parts and processes. Production part approval process, a number of elements created by the APQP process, which provides the evidence that the production process has the potential to produce good quality parts at the required rate. Customer specific requirements, Evidence provided to demonstrate that the required APQP activities are being completed to a correct quality, supported by a covering warrant, PSW, declaring that all PPAP elements meet the requirements and explaining the reason for the PPAP submission. And then finally, we have AS9145, a new aerospace sector standard created with the target of creating a common aerospace sector approach for advanced product quality planning and PPAP. For further information on AS9145, please contact Industry Forum. Thank you.